parentheses that allows you to get almost like subtotals or subscores or any information that helps solve. So in this case, we know that 12 points were scored by one player, 6 points were scored by another player. In total, that's 18. So in order to find out how many points the rest of the team scored, it would be 41 take away 18. But this, when you write it with the parentheses, allows you to see, you know, those two subtotals and then know 41 take away 12 plus 6 equals the amount of points the rest of the team scored. Johnny? 30 points. Should I say the answer? Oh, if you did 41 take away 18. One take away eight. Can we do it? No. Hey, neighbor, I need to borrow one. Okay, but now I'm a three and you're an 11. 11 take away eight is three. Three take away one is two. So 23 points is the answer. Johnny had an interesting point. Is this something we're only going to use in elementary school or in third grade? And the answer is in a big, fat, you will use this a lot. Later on, you will learn about the process of um, operations and parentheses. You always solve whatever's in parentheses first. And you're going to learn that these parentheses even have more power and more meaning later on in algebra. Eventually, you'll know that um, you could do this and... Do you even have a clue what you're supposed to do with that? No. no. What could you guess you would have to do? Um, what is it, Hassan? Did he just say times? Oh, minus. minus, no. This is, parentheses actually will later on stand for the multiplication. Not right now, but later on you're going to learn, and I think this might, maybe in fifth grade, maybe in sixth grade, Eventually, you'll learn 20 take away 10 is 10. So if you have 4 times 10 is 40. But that's later on, okay? That's in your future. But the biggest thing you need to know today is whatever's in parentheses, you do first. We had this problem, 4 plus 3 in parentheses, plus 7, take away 2, take away 1. What would I do first? What would I do first? Jalen? Well, you would do anything in parentheses. So, okay, I would do two take away one is one. And what's the other I would do? Four plus three. Four plus three. Now, I would go ahead and I would do seven. It would turn into kind of in my head. I would do seven plus seven take away one. And what would the answer be? 13. So you do 7 plus 7, take away 1. All right? So that's what you're going to be working on is page 164. That number. Name that number is when each of you in your group or, um, will just select one deck of cards. And you will put five cards face up with then a target number to match. And you'll take turns coming up with um, math number sentences that would make the target number come true. So for example, if I had seven and I had 10, I had two, I had three, and I had five, and let's say the target number was eight, you could look at all of the cards and th who's squeaking in their desk? Please stop. It's a, no, it's not. Yeah, it's a chair. Okay, I know it's a chair, but I just be so cognizant that you're it's making noise. So what are the possibilities? Looking at this, what could we do? McKenna? Five plus three. Okay, you could do five plus three. And then you would take the five and the three card. Let's, your goal is if you could use all five cards. Could you create a number sentence using all five cards? Yeah. How? Cool. Natalie. Well, I don't know why you could use four cards. Okay, tell me. 
Say 5 plus 10 is 15. Minus 2 is 13. Minus 3. Minus 10. Minus 7 plus 5. Or you could, do, you could do 10 plus 5 minus 7. Plus 3. 10 plus 5 minus 7. 15 minus 7 is 8. Oh, you could do 10 plus 2 plus 3, take away 7, because that's still 15 minus 7 is 8. But you get the gist. You're figuring out, and if you, you your goal is to take that many cards. And you would put those cards into your, like, winnings, so that means that you were, you know, able to use more. So kind of like if we send it home, we'd be, like, sending it home. Made with DoodleCast Pro.